tree. You've seen me tackle this garage multiple times, but this time I swear you guys is actually going to be different because this time I'm actually transforming my garage into a cute, girly, camera ready workshop where I can work on all of my DIY projects and film videos. Now that we're finally done cleaning and decluttering my garage, we can actually get started on the fun part, which is the actual transformation. And the storage slash parking side of the garage is already basically done, so we can just focus on the workshop area. Is this it? Like, is it this one? It doesn't say, it has the SKU number. This might be it. I don't think this is the 62 one. I told y'all I'm really in my power tools era now. Along with getting the supplies that we need for this transformation, I also got a new power drill. I got a workbench to put in my workshop area. And I even bought my first legit little pink toolbox. <laughs> those knee pads. I already have like a- getting ridiculous. <laughs> like, as much as you can, but if you miss the squat, oh well. So it's okay if there's white? We'll cross that bitch when we get to it. How about that? You sound like you said, we'll cross that bitch when we get to it. <laughs> that too. Like I explained in the last video, for the accent wall for my workshop, I really wanted to do something fun, artsy, messy. And honestly, I was just trying to think of a way to use up a lot of this pink paint that I've been collecting recently. I've done so many pink projects. I have all these different shades of pink left over and I just wanted to find a way to use them up. I was a little worried that I wouldn't have enough paint to cover the wall with just using the scraps. So we did actually buy some more pink paint I know the whole point of this was to use up what we had, but I was like, I really don't want to run out halfway through. So we bought a small amount of a few shades of pink to mix in, but we're definitely going to be using a lot of my leftovers. Now I have some Pinterest inspo for how I want to do this accent wall, but it's really just like a general vibe, some general inspo. I'm not trying to copy these pictures exactly. And I have not watched any tutorials. And honestly, I feel like we should just wing it. This style of mural is supposed to be messy. It's supposed to be abstract. It's not supposed to be perfect at all. It's just supposed to be textured and fun. So we'll see what happens. Who, who designed these? Are you kidding me? That's gonna make it so much harder. If you stretch the bucket. <laughs> what are you nervous about? I'm nervous about it looking bad. It can't look bad. It's so... It's gonna be on your wall forever. We, we're not gonna be able to cover it with anything. So if it looks bad, all your guests are gonna come into your house and be like raving. Your garage is so Ready? ugly. Ready? Shut up. <laughs> One, two, three. I'm like, a it's like spraying paint on me. That's why you got your nice work suit on. So you don't have to worry about that.
Paint is spraying all over my face and I do not know why. I think your roller is too juicy. <laughs> I'm gonna try a different type of brush. I think right now we need to focus on filling all the white holes, mm -hmm. which is splotches, and then the overlap kind of comes after. Okay. I'm sure there are multiple. This was like, this is one. How do you hold your brush? Like flat? Like, like this? No, I mean like, like what angle? Very close to parallel? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you did it right in my face. Oh, I did it to you? Yes. I'm sorry, I thought that you did it to yourself. Maybe it, we just need to make it taller. I really wasn't sure if I liked how the paint was turning out or not. I couldn't tell if it looked too messy and too just like random and crazy, but I feel like it's gonna come together once I start putting everything else in place. So we'll see. ball is painted. I was a little unsure about it the whole time until the very end and then I stepped back and I was like, you know what, this is cute, I like it. I definitely did a different technique. It doesn't look anything like my main inspo pick because I ended up doing like smaller splotches all over. So it kind of gives camo print when you like step back and squint at it. It's not supposed to be camo print. I just wanted something that was textured, brush strokey, felt very like artistic DIY and I purposely wanted it to look like unfinished and like fade off at the top and just look messy. So I think it's cute. I know it's not gonna be everybody's cup of tea. I think it's cute. It's very much my color scheme. Y'all know I have this sort of muted shade of pink in my office and like all throughout my house. So I'm happy with it and it's gonna be a nice, fun pop of color to kind of like be in the background of my content and not be so plain and boring and garagey in here. I'm gonna go ahead and push these shelves back into place because this is going to dictate where the pegboard is gonna go in between it. And then still leaving space on this side to put the ladder like about like that. I'm kind of leaving a little chunk of space in this corner too, because I think as far as like scrap wood storage, it's all just gonna kind of be piled up. I did see some cool ideas of like ways that you can like mount things on the wall to hold your scrap wood and stuff. I don't think we're gonna make it that far with this transformation. That might be like a future thing that I add on, but for now, I think I'm just gonna kind of pile things up over here. So I'm gonna leave a little space for that. And then we have my new fancy workbench, just to kind of get an idea of where this is gonna go. Basically when I'm using it, it'll be like this. And then if I wanna store it away it's pushed up all the way against the wall like that so then pegboard goes here so we bought three pieces of pegboard thinking it was going to be a much bigger chunk of pegboard on the wall but this is just one piece one piece feels a little small i think if we got a second piece like can we fit two pieces do you think not two full ones then can we do maybe one and a half and then add the Versa track because we want to add that track and like you said like that's going to add height and we want this to be rectangular and long so I like I think this by itself is fine but we will need a, a little something else to make it more rectangular one and a half long and only one high yeah I think one and a half since we bought three pieces of pegboard thinking we needed more than what we did we're only gonna be using one and a half, but I can use the other piece of pegboard in the craft room because there's that empty wall space where I feel like there's 
some things in the craft room that I could definitely pegatize up there. So I'm gonna save one whole piece for that. And then we just need to cut this piece exactly in half. Wow, look at me using my new work table. Isn't this such an improvement from the little Ikea baby table that we were using or doing everything on the floor? Okay, so this is 48. I need to cut it in half at 24. So I'm going to mark the midpoint on both sides. This should be easy to cut through with the jigsaw because it's just like cardboard basically. <laughs> It's a pretty good line if you ask me. Pretty good cut. Ideally you want to do it like this so it's the same grid. Now, how do we mount this on the wall? I saw this guy on YouTube. He was making over his garage and he had this Craftsman VersaTrack garage organization accessory kit. It's a track system that comes with like certain, you know, hooks and things that you can hook on to hang like heavier things. The pegboard is good, but it's not super, super heavy duty for like full blown like power tools and stuff to hang off of it. This is more heavy duty for heavier stuff. And this specific brand has a slot where you can just put the pegboard in it like this so it holds the pegboard if you put it at the top and bottom so you don't have to mount the pegboard separately so i'm like that's cool but the versa track as you can see does not come with any holes or any mounting stuff so i looked that up on youtube and i found another guy who said to just get these self drilling screws and just screw them directly through here into the wall into the studs. Into the studs. The idea is VersaTrack, pegboard, VersaTrack. And have it be nice and level and straight. And also, we gotta cut one of these pieces in half to fit the size of the pegboard. And hopefully this cuts well, because we only have our little jigsaw. So I've gotta cut this piece in half to match the half piece of the pegboard. This is like a really thick, heavy plastic, so. No big deal, that cut, that cut real good. Look at me cutting things. Okay, now we have our pieces cut to size. So I bought like the whole big multi-pack starter pack, which comes with two pieces of track and all these hooks and stuff, but I needed three pieces of track for what I'm trying to do. So they sell the track separately. So that was that extra piece that I just cut. But this one comes with two pieces that we're gonna use the full length of. So there's one, two, and then it comes with all the accessories. So to center this between here and here, I'm gonna mark the midpoint of what this point even is. So if it's about, it's 85 and a half, half of 85 and a half, 42.5. That's the midpoint of the wall. We're mounting a 72 inch thing, so that's 36. 36 on here. So we know that that point needs to match up with this point we just put on the wall somewhere. You're right. As far as height, though. Depend on the table, right? Yeah, so if we put the table. Oh, <gasps> we get to use your laser level. Oh yeah, I forgot we had that. I'm gonna open it up. Is it any battery? Comes with batteries. Oh, it comes with batteries. I Nothing know. ever comes with batteries. Cool. Sorry, I'm touching it. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna move it over first. Ha-ha! Good, good. Yep. Ooh. Oh, okay. It's level. It's level. It's doing That's what cool. it's supposed to. That's handy. We love so this cool. Bosch. Bosch professional laser level from amazon.com. Affiliate links down below. Please sponsor us, Bosch. We can't lock the level with your big head, I guess. <laughs> Do you want to hold it while I screw it in? Okay, you need to find studs. Oh, well, there's one right there. Are these screws not long enough? Because it doesn't feel like it's going into the stud. It sounds like there's a stud there. What about this one? This one feels 
better than that one. I think we should put in the other one and see if it works. Yeah, that worked. Oh, it's off. Let's put another one in right next to it. It won't be cute, but it will be uh, not coming off your wall. Okay. Oops. I think it's the way it was struggling to go in there. I feel like it's like holing out the hole too much. Oh. So it's making too big of a hole. And it's not Like gripping. these ones went in better, like yeah. tighter, like on the first push, but you were kind of And I think it's like, that's why. Push hard, 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 hard. Did that go in? I think it did. Okay. It's like I could pull it out, but I'm not going to. That's a really off the level, I feel. Like it's lined up here, but it's like yeah. way not on there. Oh. Wait. What? I thought it was the same on both sides. It's upside down. But why, but. I should, you should be able to put the board in there. Hold on. That's not oh, how it works though. But, but hold on. It won't work because the board needs to pop off the wall. So this, the way that it's sandwiched uh, is important. So we have to take this out. <laughs> it's upside down. We have to take it out anyway. God, why? <laughs> why is it always the most random, unexpected parts of a project that end up going wrong, being way more difficult than I expected, and taking way longer than we expected? It feels like this happens every time. I think I know what the hard parts of a project are going to be, and then I always get surprised during the process. Oh. <laughs> All right, try that again. It's in there, but it's just not in there tight. Mm -mm. Maybe like the self-drilling screws are not. This one's tight. That one's not. After many trials and tribulations, we figured out what the issue was. These screws are basically too short to reach far enough back to reach the stud to make it sturdy and secure. Luckily, we scrounged around my little collection and found these nice long screws. That's why you keep every screw you come across. You never know when you might need a random long screw. So these are actually working to reach far enough back and get it real sturdy in the studs. So now we've got it right side up, <laughs> in the right place, level with the right screw. And from here, it should be a breeze. Easy breezy. Beautiful cover girl. Yeah, that's more like it. Better. It's fine. Don't look at that. It's a. Oh, oh. <laughs> I wish you could see what just happened <laughs> from the other perspective. <laughs> I just caught the camera. <laughs> See, you go like this, it just slides right into this little slot. I hate this. Yeah, why, I don't, that's why I thought. Yeah. But I guess for that top piece. But th then do it on one of the pieces. Maybe that is the one piece. And then I think once we put the top track, it'll, it'll line up. Okay, okay, getting somewhere. Well, that took longer than expected, but it's up. So we got a track system on the top and the bottom. I think it's nice and pretty level and centered. Placement looks good, size looks good. Got the heavy duty, various heavy duty, heavyweight hooks that go on here. And then you gotta lock them in place. And then it also came with like some smaller ones. I'm not entirely sure how these work. And then for the pegboard itself, I bought a variety pack of various pegboard hooks, locking peg hook assortment. <sighs> okay, so we finally got the pegboard on the wall. Didn't think that that was gonna be that hard, but now it's starting to look like a workshop in here. To add to the cuteness factor of my workshop, I definitely wanted to add some sort of sign above my pegboard. In the last video, I mentioned how I might make it say like Raven's Workshop or something like that, but I actually came up with a different quote that I wanted to use, which is, I can make that. Simple 
but to the point, kind of inspirational, but also kind of tells you like what's going on here. Like I'm a DIY girly. I feel like it goes with my brand and it's the perfect little short phrase to put up there. And I felt like it was a little bit cuter than just saying Raven's Workshop. Low key, I started thinking like, ooh, I should make some merch that says I can make that for my fellow DIY girlies out there. Maybe like some t-shirts, hoodies, hats or something. And Zoe said that she believed in us and she felt like we can make our own custom wooden letter sign for this. I've got one that I bought off of Etsy in Zaya's bedroom and I feel like they probably used some fancy laser cutter to make that. And we're gonna be trying to do this one completely by hand. And I only watched like half of one YouTube video to kind of learn how to do this. If you can't tell by now, me and Zoe just really like to wing stuff usually. We don't do too much research and too much tutorial watching. I will watch something briefly just to get a general idea of what the supplies are. And then from there, I'm like, let's just try it, we can figure it out. And she is the exact same way, so we kind of feed off of each other's energy in that sense. Now, my Cricut maker unfortunately cannot cut through plywood to just do this project for me, but I knew there was still a way that I could use it to my advantage. For my wooden sign, I really liked this handwritten looking font, but there was some problems with it. The font is like really jaggedy and crispy on the edges, and I don't want it like that. I wanted it to be more smooth, and it's also a very thin, skinny little font, which would not work well for what we're trying to do with cutting the letters out of wood. So I had to bring it into Photoshop, put my spin on it. I don't even know how to explain how I did this. I have taught myself how to use Photoshop and I feel like I just do things how I know how to do them. I don't know if they're the proper way or the best way, but basically I made the font thicker, essentially by adding an outline to it. And then I went in and like smoothed it out a little bit so it wouldn't be so jaggedy on the edges. So this is what I'm left with. And then from here, I save this as a PNG file so I could bring it in to my Cricut design space. And within the Cricut software, I watched a YouTube tutorial to teach me how to break this big long sentence up into Cricutable cuttable pieces. The Cricut can only cut things in a 12 by 24 maximum space. This whole sentence is gonna end up being 72 inches long. So that's way too long, way too big for the Cricut to just cut out in one swipe, obviously. So I had to slice it up into basically 24 inch chunks, which ended up looking like this. I can fits on one, make fits on the other one. That almost fits on the last one, but the little last piece of the T is gonna have to be its own thing. So now, since it's all sliced up like that, when I click make, it separates it out into each uh, mat. And actually it put the little piece of the T where it fits on the extra paper, so it'll actually just be on one thing. So I have three mats worth to make the letters big enough. So I'm just gonna cut it out on cardstock paper, cause I'm just using this as like a stencil to trace onto the wood. So standard piece of cardstock paper is 12 by 12. I'm working with 12 by 24. So I just taped two pieces of cardstock paper together to give me one big piece. That way I don't have to worry about there being like a cut down the middle of one of the letters or anything. I'm gonna put this on my 12 by 24 mat. Okay, first one done. This isn't like the best strongest paper, so it kind of cut a little, a little bad right there. But I think for what I'm using it for, it should work. Does this look like something that we can cut out with the jigsaw is the question. It looks a little small and intricate, especially for a beginner who hasn't done this before, but I can't really make it any bigger than that with this method. And that's also like the size that I decided would look good up on the wall. So we're gonna try. I need to trace these letters. So I'm gonna use a Sharpie. We've got a two by four foot piece of plywood. Um, I don't know the thickness, but it looks like a little less than half an inch thick. Hopefully that's the right thickness for what we're trying to do here. I don't know, this is all a big experiment. I want to smartly utilize my space. So I'm gonna put all my letters out. 
and then just kind of see how they fit. I guess I want to give like a little halo of room so they're not like hard to cut around each other. I guess that's pretty good placement. Now I just need to trace around each letter. I'm not gonna try to be too exact. I'm using this as a guide. This is supposed to be a very like free flowing, messy handwritten font anyway. And by the time we cut and sand, it's not gonna be following these lines exactly. So I'm not too worried about like making it perfect. There's two ways I could go about this. I could like cut a halo out, like just cut around here or just cut around this chunk here and then go for the actual detail cut. But something about it is making me feel like it would actually be easier to just go straight in for the actual line. Like if I start here and go here and then just, I don't know, I'm just gonna try it. I'm gonna try and go for the actual line. I might check it out and then just, I don't know. Long story short, I don't know. We're gonna try a couple different things. Just kidding, we need to switch to a scroll blade, scroll cut wood. Skinnier blade for more detail work, I guess mm -hmm. you would say. I couldn't, I couldn't turn that okay. as tight there. I mean, that shape could still be fine. I think if I drill holes in the corners, that'll help me. So we're gonna try that. <laughs> I'm gonna drill a hole here. Hello? It needs to be sanded for sure. It's real jaggedy and splintery and stuff. So we're gonna figure out how to sand it to smooth it out somewhat, but it doesn't have to be so perfectly smooth cause you know, it's handmade. It's, it's supposed to look a little ruggedy, but I feel like that's gonna look good. I think the size is good. I was pleasantly surprised with how the jigsaw was working to cut the letters out. It wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. I was worried that it wouldn't be like possible at all because I was thinking maybe we don't have the right kind of saw, but it was working. It's just a very tedious process to cut this particular type of font out. There's a lot of twists and turns and curves and random shapes. It would be easier if I was using like a more straight letter blocky font because then it would just be straight lines. But of course, of course, I had to make things difficult and do this custom font. I think it'll be worth it though. But this was a very tedious process, so I worked into the night continuing to cut out these letters. So we've got our letters cut out. They're a little jaggedy. A little jaggedy. Mm, a little splintery. There's some not so precise cuts. This was not as hard as I thought it would be to cut out, but it also wasn't easy. It's, it's very hard to make very clean, attractive cuts. So there's these spots where it like did that, you know, on the front. It's gonna be a rustic textured look. I was thinking we could either use dry decks or wood filler and put it over. You gonna fill it. in all these little cracks? Why not? That's so much work. Then it'll look better. I feel like for, for how it's gonna be on the wall, is it worth it? Mm -hmm. No one's gonna be able to look that close. But we have all our letters, so, well, I wanted to see. As a little example, I was kind of placing them up here. This is not gonna be the exact placement because they need to like tilt a certain way and whatnot and be spaced out better, obviously, but just for like size. Oop, that one won't stand up. Oh, I can make that. Yeah, I think the size is good. I can make that more or less. I mean, I'm gonna space them better when I actually stick them up there, but I feel like the size is good. The placement is gonna be good. Yeah, so now we just have to sand. So I went to Walmart 
for various items. I'm thinking I want these to be gold. So I got my favorite gold spray paint, Rust-Oleum Bright Coat Metallic Finish Gold. I've tried a lot of gold spray paints. This one is the best. And then I also got this Hyper Tough 12 volt Max Cordless Rotary Tool, which did you know that Dremel is the name of the brand, not the tool? Yeah. You knew that? Oh. It's, it's like a Band-Aid thing. Fun fact, Dremel is the name of the brand. It's actually called a rotary tool, but it's a Dremel because this is very similar. I feel like I can use this because it's similar to a nail yes. tool, which I've used before. It even has like all the same tips on it. Low key, we probably could have just used my, the one I got for my nails. You already have one? I mean, it's not heavy duty, like this but is it's, little. It's... I don't know if it would w really work on wood, but I bought this, it was only like $35 at Walmart. It comes with all the um, little accessories. So I felt like this would be helpful because we got a lot of little nooks and crannies in here that need to be sanded and trying to do that with just regular sandpaper, I feel like would be really hard. So I'm thinking this will help us with that. And it's another little tool to add to my collection that I'm growing. I bought us some gloves also too. Very cool. These are painter's gloves. They have some sort of breathable technology, I don't know. More so for when we're like spray painting or whatever. I got this scotch clear mount tape to mount them on the wall because I did not want to mess with trying to put actual mounting hardware on the back of all these letters and then try to like nail it and screw it and line it up. And it's just gonna be so much easier. This is basically really strong double-sided tape. Put it on the back, stick it on the wall. I feel like that should be good enough. These are not super heavy. Walmart quality. Man, I really wish we had a, uh, a tool brand to sponsor us. Any lovely tool brands that I may or may not already own a couple pieces of want to complete my set? Hit me up. Email is down below. <laughs> So we're pretty much almost done sanding. The Dremel died, so we're waiting for that to charge. And I also filled in some of the holes, some of the big like splintery gash marks, the, just like the more noticeable ones. I just used this plastic Woodex all-purpose wood filler and just use my finger to kind of like fill in some of those spots. So I have to wait for this to dry and then sand that back smooth. And then we're waiting for the Dremel to charge to finish sanding some of these, but this one is done. So I wanna go ahead and test the spray paint and see if it's gonna actually look how I want it to look. I'm using my Rust-Oleum brand spray paint trigger gun thing, which I am obsessed with because it makes spray painting so much easier and it attaches onto any spray paint can. And this is also Rust-Oleum brand spray paint. So Rust-Oleum, if you're watching, I'm a big fan. Let's see. I know from experience, spray paint kind of reacts funny on wood, like straight raw wood. Some type of primer probably would have helped, but. If we get multiple coats, kind of like in these, some of these areas, I think you'll get that shine. But especially since we sanded it, like we opened up the pores in the wood, so it's gonna soak in. But I think if we just keep layering it, we'll get like the shine that you really want. I've had bad experiences with that in the past. I had that exact same thought process yeah. and it didn't work. It just kept soaking in, soaking in, soaking in, and it never got an even coverage. So that's what I'm kind of worried about. You know about. that meme where it's like two guys and they're like digging a tunnel and one of it, one of them like turns back just before he gets like like the diamonds, but the other guy like keeps going. So you think I should have just did one more coat? Yeah, just keep doing one happens. more coat. Yeah, because some of this, some of it, it looks how I think you want. Yeah, it to like look. this spot right here where it's like shinier, but then right here where it's more dull. That just looks like like it didn't get full coverage. One more layer. I think it. I think it's getting there. Yeah. Optimum shininess would be if you did like a good primer and made it super what slick, plastically, pl plasticky smooth, you know what I mean? And then spray painted it. Can we do that with like one of the spray paints you already have or? Like, can we do a base? Matte paint and primer in one. Color wise, I think gold is a good 
color. Good choice, but this does look a little uneven. Can you hold it up so I can see? I don't know if I can reach. So I can see what it looks like against the, yeah, I like the gold. It's just, it's not as gold and shiny as I would want. Okay, let's see if it looks any different or any better on a primed surface with just this random primer that I had. Oh, That's shiny. Now that is the back side, so it might be slightly different, but the shine level has increased by at least 50%. Not primed versus primed. I realized that in order to get the full gold metallic effect that I want on these letters, I'm gonna need to prime them first, but of course I ran out of primer, so we're gonna have to come back to this. Some of our letters have been primed and that's drying. Some of our letters need more sanding and waiting for like wood putty to dry and stuff. Gonna come back to that in the meanwhile. While? We are going to start this organizational process over here and beautifying the stuff that's on these shelves. Um, I do wanna use some of these existing containers. They're perfectly good containers. They just have old labels on it from many moons ago. These containers have been used for like five different things. They were originally used for my makeup collection two residences ago. Actually, it was like racks like this with buckets like this. That's how I had my makeup. So those need to be peeled off, relabeled properly. Rejuge. We got some Bottles bobbles and beads. beads. Got some cricket labels on some of them from when they were used in the craft room. This says this was makeup setting spray, and then it was bobbles and beads, and now it's about to be something else in the garage. So reduce, reuse, recycle. I want to make this look cute, organized, put everything in their containers. I bought new containers, cute pink toolbox to organize some stuff in. And then as well as from Walmart, I got this little, it was in the bead, like bead craft section, but I think it'll be good for screws and nails and things. And then these clear ones, and then these, perfectly colored pink tubs that literally match my mural perfectly. That was a good Walmart find. And then I even got some hooks so we can hang up our jumpsuits out here somewhere too. For my paint rack, this is mainly all paints and paint related items. I'm gonna switch these into the new containers that I got. I'm gonna move this out the way. These will end up here. smaller bucket for like smaller painting things like these paint brushes. This I might hang on the pegboard actually because it's like a different thing. With lids because it gets so dusty in here, we want it to be protected from dust and sawdust and all the things. And then we can do one that's like caulk, the caulk bu bucket. <laughs> Just gonna put the stuff that goes into a gun separate. Wow. 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 That was a perfect little thing. Right? Then another big one, I'm gonna put all this kind of like miscellaneous, I don't even know what you would call this. This is expanding foam, insulating foam that I use for a lot of DIY projects. I use Drydex, it's covered in paint, but this is Drydex. This is a random extra bucket of grout. Maybe I'll grout something in the future. Yes. You never know. But all these things feel paint thinner, just like dangerous liquids and creams <laughs> and foams and whatnot. I'm just gonna put them inside of here so they're like inside of something. Grout stain, if you wanna change the color of your grout, cause I thought I was gonna change the color of my grout in my kitchen, but then I chickened out. Um, and like all these types of things. 
I'm just gonna put in here. I don't know if two fit like this, that would be better. Perfect fit. Wow. They don't call me the eyeball queen for nothing. This rack is a little bit more random. So I'm gonna have to think a little harder about how I wanna organize it. It's mainly like tools. And then there's some gardening stuff and some miscellaneous items. That one was easier because it was basically like all like paint related stuff. And I kind of already knew how I wanted to group it. This one, I'm not sure. Some of this stuff that's here though, I think I'm going to hang on my pegboard so like my smaller tools i still need to finish hooking all the little things and figure out the placement and everything but there's like you can like go like that or you could go like that something like that so all those little types of things i'll probably put up here so i'm gonna separate out pegboard items from non-pegboard items i even have a whisk <laughs> I have a whisk, I have a kitchen knife, the DIY knife. There's a lot of random things in here. Let's see, like this type of stuff. This is also a, for baking cakes, icing cakes. This came from when we were cleaning out the craft room, I believe, and we just sort of threw some miscellaneous tools. This is the stuff I was looking for, the screwdriver and stuff. Oh. Do you want some more miscellaneous tools? Careful, there's a knife. Why did you have it open? <laughs> I didn't know it was open. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Hmm. How much do you have in there? Another one. That's it? Yeah. I'm gonna just make a pile of stuff that I know I wanna like put on the pegboard versus what I wanna find a container for. Extension cords, I think I'm gonna put like my bigger, this is my sander inside of here. This is, goes to the saw, the miter box thing, whatever it's called. The laser level, the other little screwdriver and its cord, and any other kind of big tool stuff like that that I would need to put in there. Probably the battery and battery charger, we're using it right now, but the batteries that go with the other tools we're using and the little Dremel will end up going in here too. So I think that's that. This is all gardening stuff. So I'm just gonna put a lid on that. Then we've got this and this, that kind of goes with that as well as this tools and I'm gonna do, make this like the kind of cleaning stuff more like outdoor cleaning garage cleaning type products I have got a bunch of Allen wrenches and a normal wrench for you a little this looks like for a little <laughs> doll <laughs> Give it to Zaya. For these tiny tools. Oh, my tiny toolbox. Yeah. I almost forgot about my, oh, there it goes. Uh-oh. My pink little toolbox. I knew I was missing some, some extra storage. We could put tiny tools in the tiny pink toolbox. Perfect. You got that and that. <laughs> wait, 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 I think this opens. Oh, and that. You should put a little mirror. <laughs> or, or you could like cricket something cute, like a cute little thing. There's this. Um, do you wanna, well, let's keep all the zip ties yeah. together. Like a, a shorty? Sure. <laughs> that goes in there. Now, where, this has to go up here. Maybe right here. Helps if it's pushed up against there. Or I need to put some little feet on it. We got this, which has socket wrench things inside. My dad gave it to me. This has the paint sprayer gun in it. It looks similar. So, feels like it should go there. We have sandpaper, we have zip ties, and we have these sharp objects <laughs> that I'm not sure. Well, maybe it's sharp objects. Oh, and we have that. Zip ties, and I'm sure I'll have other fasteners that will end up going in there. Sandpaper and sharp objects. And then these can go up here. little over-the-door hook, non-slip hook organizer. <laughs> Found this in the closet organizing section at Walmart. I was thinking maybe, hopefully, they could just do like that. Yeah, like that. And then for our RETV work jumpsuits, we can just 
hang them up out here. and a little notebook to write down all of my amazing DIY ideas. Pegboard is done and looking cute. Now to finish off the wall, I gotta put my I can make that letters up there. I took a picture of how it actually like looks in line so I can kind of go based off of that and make sure I get the letters sort of aligned properly. I guess it doesn't have to be super exact because this font is very not on one straight line anyway, but I have the Scotch Mount double-sided tape and I'm hoping that this will work. I've used it before on other things and it worked well, so it should work. But I'm thinking I'm just gonna take little chunks of it and put it on the back of each letter. A few pieces. Make sure it's on there good. Peel off the backing. This is really sticky, like ultra sticky, strong double-sided tape, so it's kinda hard to get the backing off. There we go. Try not to touch it so it doesn't lose its stickiness. I might need my Cricut thingy. And then I have the eye going a little slanted. Oh yeah, that's super sticky. That's on there. I'm actually gonna do the end of the sentence next. That way I know I have both ends where they need to be and then I'll fit the rest in the middle. And I'm really just gonna eyeball the rest of this. And really I don't need a stool, I guess I can reach. <laughs> The A needs to match the way the A is in that, if that makes sense. Uh, it is a tilted font. Like, it's not. I, uh, I think the A is sitting too high. So the C dips down below. You said sitting too high. Right, so if you tilt it clockwise. Is it going the same direction as the other A? I think so. Like yes. the same slantiness? Yes. I'm not gonna lie, I thought that I had it in the bag and I could eyeball the placement of where to stick the letters on the wall, but I did it completely wrong the first time and it was all wonky, so I had to peel them all off and re-stick them on there, but eventually I got it right and I got it on there pretty straight, I think. Warning, I don't recommend using this mounting tape if you're worried about damaging your walls. I'm not worried about damaging these walls because I don't plan on taking these letters down anytime soon, and if I do wanna take them down, it's just my garage, if the walls get damaged, I don't really care too much. But if you're like renting or anything like that, don't try this at home. Welcome to my new workshop. Quick little walkthrough. Left space right here for all of my various ladders. Big ladder, medium ladder, baby ladder. And then we've got the first rack here, which is mainly the paint storage area. I've got some of my smaller cans of paint on top, as well as these little things of wood stain. And then the larger gallon size paint cans here. This is all the paint that I use inside my house, in my office, in Zaya's room, in the playroom, just in case we need to do any touch-ups. And just in case I wanna use it for a future project, it's always good to hold on to 
extra paint. And then this shelf is obviously the spray paint, new and improved containers, so I can clearly see everything. All of my colorful ones here, some of the more neutral ones here, and some of the miscellaneous ones here. I really like the way this turned out. I think it looks so much better than before. And no need to label them, because you can see exactly what it is. So I like that clean look. Then down here, we do have some labeled containers with lids, because I have learned my lesson. You cannot have opened things in a garage where you're gonna be cutting and sanding and dealing with sawdust and all the sanding particles because everything got so dusty when we were doing the Playroom Ikea hack. So now I know if you don't want the stuff to get dusty, it has to have a lid on it. So I did that like that and then just labeled it so that I would know obviously what's in there because you can't really see it. So we got tarps and tape in here, paint brushes and caulking guns. Everything is easily accessible. Nothing is too stacked on top of each other or behind each other. That's one thing that I don't like. I like to be able to easily reach in and grab what I need and put it back. And then on the lower level, I am super excited about how well these bins match my paint pink color scheme on the wall. I got super lucky with that. I love the way that looks. And I've just got some of my bigger items in here, paint pans, paint rollers, stuff like that in there. And then some miscellaneous paint related items in there. And I felt like I didn't really need to label them because you can see through these pretty well and I know what's in there. So not everything needs a label. Moving on, I got the little hook here to hang the jumpsuit, one on the other side as well for Zoe's jumpsuit. And then we have the beautiful new pegboard which I'm actually super happy with how it turned out. I was a little nervous during the process because we struggled a little bit to get it on there. And then we struggled a little bit to style everything and find a place for everything. And then we struggled a little bit with putting the words on top. This whole section was a struggle, but we did it and I like it. I think it looks good. I love how easily accessible everything is right here. These are a lot of my go-to tools, you know, your hammers, your whisks. <laughs> Little pens and pencils, tape. We got our goggles, safety first. I know I've not been doing a good job of wearing those, but since they're front and center now, I think I'll remember to wear them more. And then I wanted to make it cute. This is my cute, girly DIY workshop. I wanted to put some of my personality in there and have it be aesthetically pleasing whenever I'm filming videos here. So I found this at Walmart for a dollar. It had little holes to hang it, so that worked out perfectly. We got little flowers in the cup. Add some little girly feminine touches and then I got my power tools, my jigsaw, my new drill that I bought, the saw, everything like that. And there's room to grow and room to kind of rearrange. All of this stuff can be unhooked, switched, changed, and I actually still have this whole rack here which can hold more stuff hanging down this way. So as I get more tools, that's where those are gonna go. And then this rack over here, I've got my tarps up here that I usually lay out whenever we're painting something. We've got smaller containers here, again with lids, sandpaper, sharp tools, and fasteners. And then I got my cute little pink toolbox, which I'm super excited about. Found this at Lowe's. And I don't really have anything too important in here. I just wanted it because it's pink and it, it looks cute on the shelf, but I'll find some stuff to put in there. This is more of like my gardening shelf. I got my watering cans, some pots, some fertilizer, all of my gardening stuff in here. And this is just some cleaning supplies. We got this toolbox, this one which has the paint sprayer gun in it, and my new and improved screws and nails storage. I'm really excited about this. I think this turned out really good. This was the perfect thing. And I didn't even get that from the tool section. I got it from the crafting section. So pro tip look in the crafting section for stuff like that. And then two more of the pink bins, extension cords, some bigger tools in there. And the last thing that I'm super excited about is my new workbench. This was probably the thing that I needed the most urgently because we were using that little Ikea table or just doing stuff straight on the floor. It wasn't very easy to do that and it also was probably dangerous to be doing it like that. So now I have a proper workbench work table with a nice sturdy heavy duty top to it. Nice sturdy base, it's on wheels, you can roll it around, you can lock the wheels if you don't want it rolling, and it adds a little bit of extra storage because I do have these two drawers here in the front, which I do have some of my other go-to tools in there, and 
room to grow. The other cool thing about this workbench is that it can go up and down. So it's got this little crank here. You just roll it down if you want it all the way down, if you're doing something like this, or if you want it all the way up so you don't have to bend over so low when you're doing standing work, which is good for me because I'm kind of tall. It goes up pretty high. Let's see. I think this is the total height. It's like countertop height which is good for standing work. And lastly, I had these gold stools. I bought these a few homes ago and they've just sort of been floating around my house currently because I don't really have like a good place to put them inside the house. So I thought they would be cute to put out here. We needed something to sit on anyway and it matches my little words on the wall too. So I'm super happy with how this turned out and I'm excited to use it. And I think the next project that I will be working on in this space is something for my guest room because we're about to start a guest room makeover.